Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. And I'm Ricky. Up for the session today is episode 119.07%, not 0.7%, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing, of course. But yeah, this was an interesting episode. Uh, we see Nathan's ambition in its full glory. <laughs> <laughs> he just drinks that Lindemann Kool-Aid so quickly. So interesting fact about the previous episode, 118, aired on March 5th, 2007. And so this episode ends up coming on about April 23rd, 2007. So that is a huge break in between that I don't really remember taking. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they filled up the comics with, but... Yeah, so this is like after a break, and we come... And that was basically a cliffhanger, where we meet Linderman, and it's this great reveal, and then it's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that, well, now that I think about it, that's actually a pretty great way to go on a little mini hiatus for. So, yeah, we, that was the good thing about Heroes. They always did cliffhangers quite, like, really well. Every episode ended on a really good cliffhanger, for most parts. This is, like, one of the strongest episodes from, like, one of those little mid-season kind of hiatus things that they were doing back then. Yeah. It came back really strong. Yep. This is a strong episode. So, um, do you have the synopsis? Yes. Okay. When Mr. Bennett, Matt, Ted combine their efforts to thwart the company, Matt discovers an important connection. Mr. Linderman reveals his plans to Nathan. Peter and Silas' fight ends badly for both. Claire learns more about a biological family from her grandmother and finally meets her biological father. Isaac becomes a hero. Mohinder seeks help in stopping Sila. When Jessica defies Linderman, he seeks alternative means to gain what he wants. In the future, Hero and Ando begin to search for clues about what went wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. Chapter 19 begins with Mr. Bennett being visited by Claire at his cell at Time Attack Paper Summit. And she tells him that she's been caught, but quickly realizes <laughs> it's not Claire, it's Candace using her powers. It seems like the only picture that they have of Claire that she can use is one of her in a cheerleader outfit, because that's what she turns up in. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> And, um, she, yeah, she's really sinister. Like, when she turns back into Candice and she says, um, what did she say? She says, I can make him see things that will make him tear his eyes out. I'm like, what is she actually going to show him? Like, especially if she's, like, dressed up as Claire, that's kind of, that's kind of effed up. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. But, like, I, I was so sad because isn't Candice played by Missy, um... Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I liked her in that, that Stick It movie, and so to see her in this sinister role, I was just like, no, <laughs> childhood ruined! <laughs> anyway, um, so Thompson shows up and sends Kansas away. He tells Bennett that they're keeping him alive out of friendship, but when the orders come down, they will kill him, and I'm like, you ain't killing him. <laughs> I said that from the get-go. I'm like, he's the best thing going about yeah, exactly. this Exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Linderman's archives, we see Nathan and Mr. Linderman discussing art as the um, opening monologue was provided by Mr. Linderman, yeah. correct? So, yeah, Linderman then demonstrates his power, and guess what? He can heal a dying flower. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, uh, if, you, if you saw the, if you read the comics, you would have known this already. It wouldn't have been much of a surprise, but it was quite a good reveal. Yeah. Like I said, those particular sets of comics, I, I hadn't read in a long time, and I didn't really remember where they fell what was the point of it yeah and now that you've done it i'm like oh that was the point of it <laughs> <laughs> in retrospect meanwhile we see a cockroach crawl past him as uh matt wakes up in his cell and it's a noah shouting in his head basically and he's like if you hear me bang on the pipe i love it it's like just the the one-sided conversation hrg is just essentially like you're gonna do what i say whether you like it or not because you can't because you can't he can't answer back <laughs> i love it <laughs> oh, and it's just so the way he he doesn't stick it to him but he kind of screws him over he's like if you can hear me 
just bang on the pipes. And then as it goes on later, he's like, yeah, they probably heard you banging on the pipes. So they're going to come and get you. So it doesn't matter whether or not you wanted to get help me or not. You've already started it. So you might as well carry on. <laughs> he should have noticed no one. He I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> then we cut to Nathan, who's examining the picture of Hiro rescuing a Jap- the Japanese school girl. He's like, hey, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mr. Lindemary goes, I want my sword back. <laughs> Classic. I love that line. And then they examine um, Isaac's painting of the explosion, and this is where things go sideways. (laughs) Linderman tells of an earlier generation of heroes, aka specials, aka evolved humans who worked together to make the world a better place. Which we would later, which we would later find out would be the company. I'm assuming from that, right? Yep. 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 Oh, that man! When they did those flash set of flashbacks, so good. Yeah. Oh, but mostly because Mama Petrelli is a boss. <laughs> exactly, they, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, we're going to do this explosion because it's going to serve as a catalyst to heal the whole world. And yeah. Nathan's like, um, it's going to destroy half of New York. <laughs> and he's like, it's only zero point. It's only point zero seven of the world's population. It's fair That's enough. That's an acceptable yeah. loss. <laughs> it's like, um, did you ever watch Angel? Yeah, of course. Kind Why of... he gets to, he started the apocalypse because he killed yeah. <laughs> Gina Torres. Exactly. I agree. That's exactly That's what it's... <laughs> <laughs> that twisted logic of doing that obviously this was before angel but that's exactly what it reminded me of it's that kind of weird mentality of killing thousands to save millions and it's it said it's people will be united through fear and the whole future thing like i was thinking about it and no matter how many times i stop the future from happening in heroes it always still kind of comes to pass in some way or, or another like there's always going to be the specials being found out and there's always the retaliation to that in like every season there's something along the lines that happens in the future and it's because specials are found out so i think it's like isaac who says you can't fight the future and that's exactly what they're all doing and trying to stop but he seems like he was right into just letting letting go and just going with what what's going to happen I, I agree. But then it even gets more twisted because Linderman goes, okay, this is what we're going to do. Here's a picture of you in the White House. Yeah. And then they kind of talk about his brother, but then Linderman's like, that's only Peter's part to play. Mm. And so the wheels are turning in Nathan's little scammy head. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> so we head back to Prime Attack, and Noah is guiding Matt to break off the rusted pipe and use it to bludgeon the <laughs> I, <laughs> So Matt fun. finally gets out. As much as the past couple of episodes have been about Paul Parkman, he was like on form in this episode. Even though he's basically been the puppet for HRG, he's just kick-ass throughout the whole episode. And he's pretty kick-ass for the next couple of episodes. There's no Paul Parkman at all. Yeah, I kind of agree. And you know what? This particular section, Parasite Chapter 19 and Five Years Gone, they all flow together so smoothly. Yeah. It's such a big little mini arc. Yeah. And it just goes, this is what heroes could have been the exactly, whole Exactly, yeah. Time. If they had just got rid of those those Phyllis Sanders episodes, we would have been good. <laughs> I'm saying. So we cut to Mohinder's apartment where we've kind of uh, left that particular cliffhanger. Peter arrives, finds the bloody Mohinder pinned to the ceiling, <laughs> and then he sees Cyrus, who then peels him to the wall and tries to like cut his head open, yes. but <laughs> only the little stupid girl falls. <laughs> 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 and his wounds heal, and Cyrus like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> In the original timeline, is this where he got his scar from? But then someone pointed out, obviously, the scars across his face and not his forehead. In the original, I I keep on doing air quotes. In the original timeline, obviously, he didn't have Claire's powers. So because he never saved Claire. If this carried on as as it did, then this would have been Peter and Sila fighting for the first time. And he would have got his powers and he would have stopped it somehow using another one of his powers. So maybe this is how he got his scar in the future. Or maybe it's just completely wrong and it's something else, but... I always see... That's the thing about time travel. I don't... Like, we don't actually really technically, honestly know the original timeline. Yeah. Do we? I don't think so. I think we can kind of work it out as in, like... The way I would see it is everything ran exactly the same as it did before, only the major events never happened. So Claire would have died or died at homecoming. Oh, uh, but we don't really know that because obviously in future episodes we find out, you know, she she can't die. So yeah. Sila would have got the power and he would have just carried on. Um, maybe he wouldn't have joined up oh no, because then he wouldn't have been caught and then he wouldn't have joined up with Mahinda. So it's yeah, you're right. Exactly. It's, <laughs> 
the butterfly effect in the best way that yeah. provides great theory crafting. But like, I, I was always a little bitter that they never really actually were like, or even just did a comic like, here's the original. Yeah, timeline. here's how it originally so played out. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it makes me so curious, especially about this particular situation with Siler having to die and Hero being, well, we'll get to that in the next one, but yeah. So they actually kind of get Siler out of there and Mohinder and Peter kind of just commiserate together. Yeah. Peter goes invisible and, you know, Ah, Siler can't catch him and Mohinder's like smashes him to the ground (laughs) with a map and I'm like, yes! But um, I always wondered, like, when I was watching this, I was like, um, Peter's invisible. Didn't Sila just gain the power of super hearing? So shouldn't he be able to hear him? Like, obviously, he used his powers as best he could. That was the best idea to do was the telekinesis kind of stabbing motion. But still, he had the power of super hearing. So he could have just heard whenever he made a footstep and just followed I remember him. he was still, oh, now I know why they did it. Because when they showed him that he was still learning how to use that particular power. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he got, they used... They used the tuning fork, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe they are self-aware of themselves at certain times. Maybe the good writers in the writers' rooms are self-aware. Of or maybe themselves. we're just maybe we're just giving them more credit than, <laughs> than they deserve. Yeah, these, these particular three episodes, I do think they deserve a lot of praise because they, they were enough. really good and flowed well. Together. Fair enough. Yeah. So we cut to Angela's house and Claire's looking at the photos of Peter all creepy and Nathan <laughs> at Nathan's wedding. So Claire asked her if she has powers too, but then Angela <laughs> deflects the question and I'm like, yes, I love Mama Petrelli. <laughs> she is, it's so weird how two of the best characters in Heroes are essentially the oldest characters. It's you got HRG and Mama Petrelli and they weren't even regulars at the beginning. They were just, you know, the guest stars and how they managed to force their way on into like series regular just by the sheer presence of their characters. I love how her answer is, let's go to Paris and buy pretty things. (laughs) I was like, I want a grandma like that. (laughs) Cut to Siler who's still in Mohinder's apartment trying to find Peter and Mohinder's missing and then he sees uh, Chandra's laptop he shattered and ruined throws and a strike. Course, yeah the lift <laughs> yeah. that's where the lift was <laughs> and then he finds a scrap from Ninth Wonders how freaking convenient. apropos convenient point is convenient like, but no not really because the whole time they had been showing the back page yeah. of uh, Ninth Wonders with his address in it and for the life of me I can't really remember a comic book actually ever yeah. <laughs> So now it's like, oh, okay, it's all coming together now. <laughs> Cut to Isaac's apartment, and Isaac is given a courier the art for the latest issue of Knife Wonders to deliver to his publisher. He's like, it's going to be my last issue. And he shows the courier a page from the comic book Hero Five Years in the Future, standing on the rooftop of the Devereux building, because yeah. that's where all the, the hard stuff goes down. Yeah. Um, he also gives the courier his sketchbook telling him it might be worth money someday. And then he looks at the painting of his own death, and I'm like... Yeah, he's, ah. he's given up. I think that's the that was the best resolution to a character's arc. Honestly, he finally just completely gave in. Yeah, they kind of foreshadowed it from, like, the beginning of the episode where it, it's just shots of his paintings, and they're kind of reminding you that, you know, what he does and what's coming to the future for him. And in hindsight, you can kind of see that they were foreshadowing it from the beginning. I just think that he wasn't... As much as I liked him, he wasn't really that fully developed. The only things we knew about him was that he could paint the future he loved Simone far too much and he was a drug addict and there was kind of redemption but at the same time it didn't feel satisfactory like as it goes on I, I was just kind of oh he's dead you know it it wasn't like they killed off hero you know it was they killed off like a little character for me well, and we always knew he was gonna well die I suppose, but they could have built up to it a bit more. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. But, like, for me, like, first time I ever watched the series, I was just, yeah. I mean, I was upset. Like, Isaac, I actually liked Isaac the first time that I watched Heroes. And I, was, I remember watching the cast when they were on Larry King. And they were like, yeah, he's, like, the only character that doesn't get to come back. He's gone <laughs> for good. And I was just, that's not right. But anyway, here comes the dreadful part of the episode. Because we cut to Las Vegas with Jessica and DL, who are arguing outside their house. And did, did he ever, like, confront her that, that he knew? Because I for the life of me can't remember I, the last time I re- thing I remember about Jessica and DL was when they were having she a co- went off to the 
the thing with Nathan. Okay. Because the last thing I remember right. was him. He was talking to her and then he t- turned around and he was smiling and he walked away and his smile kind of faded. You kind of knew that he knew. But like, I don't remember him at all. It like, wasn't confront- explicitly yeah. stated. I didn't know. I didn't. There wasn't an actual confrontation like that. This kind of bridged those two. I think it might have got left on the cut. Yeah. For honest. But yeah, that's the last time that we saw the Sanderses in Parasite. And so now they're outside the house arguing. Beale's packing the leave. Jessica's like, everything she's done has been to protect uh, Micah. Beale tells her, you know, she likes the violence. Yeah. And that she hasn't turned into Jessica. She's turned into her father. And I'm like, what? That's <laughs> a quick way to get torn to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Just then, one of Linderman's guards arrives and tells Jessica that Linderman wants fear. And DL tells her that she needs to protect Micah from her life and that she can say goodbye to him that night. And I'm like, mm, mm, no, that's not going to work. At Primatech, Bennett continues to guide Matt, helping him find a Primatech jacket. Oh, that was so cute. I want one. <laughs> no shoes. Thompson. <laughs> but no shoes. So he's still walking around barefooted. <laughs> Gross. Thompson and Primatech agent walk past, discussing their plans to move Bennett, Matt, and Ted. And then following Bennett's commands, Matt uses the guard's pass to release Ted from his cell. Thompson and the agent arrive at Matt's cell and finds the down guard. Thompson sounds the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Our company doesn't have its stuff together. With me. I'm a little <laughs> At Angela's house, Mohinder arrives in a taxi and he tells her Peter is dead. She examines Peter's body and sends Mohinder away. Claire comes down the stairs and sees Pet Peter is dead as Angela begins to break down sobbing. And I'm like, oh, you actually did actually care a little bit about your other son? <laughs> no, nice. she always made it she known that, that he was her favorite. I'm sure there's one where she actually says, you are my favorite. Yeah, but I always took that as sarcasm. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's just Angela for you. No, I, I always <laughs> got the fact that she liked him more than Nathan. I think Nathan was more a daddy's boy, but she felt like she had to push Nathan more because she knew Peter could kind of find his own way doing whatever he wanted, whereas Nathan kind of needed the mummy behind him. Because he always needed, like, a woman behind him, didn't he? Like, it was... <laughs> it was... It was Mama Petrelli, and even at one point, it was his wife who was like, yeah, you should choose these postcards. But yeah, no, I really did like that, because, like I said, I always took it as sarcasm. I mean, she, she's just such a stoic person yeah. that it was kind of nice to see. It's just like, get um, out, get out, Mohinder. But <laughs> I always find that weird, like, that he just brings the dead body to them. Like, he's a doctor. Here you go. I know, like, he's a doctor. Well, yeah. Not that kind of yeah, doctor. But, um, he's made it known more than enough times that you know he's he knows about this Sila character he's made it known to like the police and to the FBI so he could just like take the body to the FBI or something and just say you know this is one of Sila's victims and sure he'd be under suspicion but I think there's more than enough background to it that they would take it seriously yes she'll be like yeah yeah exactly I told you Sila existed Oh. Now that would have been an interesting side story. <laughs> Jessica arrives at the Corinthian Casino and meets up with Linderman. He's like, yeah, I'm going to need a favor. Your son, I'm going to need his cow. And he's like, I'm going to help Micah become great. But Jessica's like, nah. Yeah. And Linderman's like, LOL, no, that was just a <laughs> That was a curse, yeah. yeah. I like the, f- it kind of gives her depth that she finally is giving a crap about Micah. Her and Linderman have that kind of same kind of twisted logic. Like she's doing everything she can to look after Micah. I like she was doing that just because she like she actually does care about Nikki, but she also likes to have big sexy guns yeah. and, and, and scare <laughs> pieces. But at the same time, Nikki is still kind of her responsibility, yeah. and thus Micah is too kind of thing. Mm. But this one was finally her taking a firm like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time we heard Jessica say no to Mr. Linderman, and so. Mr. Linderman obviously knew all along, which is what I was kind of waiting for the confirmation about the two. Yeah. Cut to Primatech. Bennett relays information to Ted through Matt, and he's like, hey, you gotta uh, release this electromagnetic pole. Which, obviously, he's able to do with, like, just talking through on the first go. Like, perfect. <laughs> it was funny. He's like, you might want to... Step, step back. <laughs> I like the whole Parkman and Mr. Bennett being the puppet master. I thought it led to dramatic sequences and I was always looking forward to whenever we got back to Parkman and seeing what, what Mr. Bennett was going to do through him. And it also gave them a good way for them to kind of hook up. They've basically, they've replaced Hannah with Mr. Bennett and it kind of gives them a way to get back into the plot. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. I definitely loved it, because no Hannah, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> in New York, Nathan arrives at his mother's house and sees Peter's body. Nathan sobs, and he's like, you weren't supposed to die, and I'm going to use air quotes this way. <laughs> <laughs> and then Angela tries to persuade him to hide Peter's death until after the election. And I'm like, 
damn it! You hide everything People. until after the election. Your daughter, your brother's death. <laughs> just me. <laughs> Family is brutal. Right. Claire asks to see Peter, and as she cradles his head, she finds the shard of glass and removes it immediately. Yeah. And Peter regenerates. And then I remember this was the aha moment, and I was just like, oh. Because <laughs> that's kind of what happened with her in the. Yeah. When she had that rapey situation. But didn't a. <laughs> but shouldn't a. Mama Petrelli had known, like, that Peter had the power. But I guess she didn't know, like, how it works properly. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's weird that he didn't even try to remove the glass. Nobody else tried yeah. to remove it or anything. But I don't know. It's just one of those things you don't check. What's his name would have thought of it? HRG. Yeah. And then he tells Claire she saved his life. And she says, I guess we're even. And I'm just like, dude, can you guys just not be in the same place? <laughs> They, they were dating at this point. Yeah. So it was just like, and it was like kind of well known. And so it was just extra creepy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Peter and Nathan sit in the home office in Angela's house and they discuss Peter's death, their relationship later. And then Peter's like, he can't die because of Claire's ability. And then Nathan's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> But that kind of um, took a bit of drama away from the exploding man thing, I think, because it kind of gives you what's going to happen. Like, he's going to explode, but he'll survive, so you don't really have to worry about it. Explode and that's it, and then he's going to die. Like, it's not like a death for him as well. It's, he's just going to explode. And and Peter explained it well enough and like, you know, I'm going to explode and I'm going to come back, but I'm going to have to kind of live with the fact that I've killed 0.07 of the world's population, but... Still, it kind of took a bit of the drama away from it. But see, this is the thing, though. Like, because I guess I'm a huge Highlander fan. Like, yeah, you can be a moral all you want, but if you cut the head off, that's kind of like a general genre thing. You're dead. Dead is dead. Yeah, but they kind of, I think... So if he exploded and his head popped off... <laughs> Well, we never you know really I mean? kind of saw it, but the only kind of inkling we've had about someone exploding was Ted in uh, Company Man, but they kind of stopped that, didn't they? So We never really knew how it was yeah. going to work, so I think that was kind of smart and sneaky, but at the same time frustrating. Mm. Yeah. But then Peter argues that Claire is somehow connected to everything that's going on, that, you know, they shouldn't let Angela send her away. Well, you know, save the cheerleader, then... save the world. She's connected to everything, so... <laughs> Definitely. Angela comes in and Peter begins to explain about his abilities, but she's like, dude, I knew about y'all before you yeah. knew about y'all. <laughs> just like, tell me more. I think that kind of claims back to the young Linderman, like him and a group of people. You probably know that some people are involved. Like, you can kind of guess that, from at least from the comics anyway, that, you know, the, the Petrellis are involved. And from that, you can kind of guess that the Nakamuras are also involved. And it kind of, you know, shows that it's not just this current generation of heroes that are dealing with something. The past generation of heroes who teamed up kind of dealt with something big as well. And it kind of gives credence. It kind of brings a more, I, don't, I wouldn't say balance, but it brings more of a mythology into the show, which they obviously get to later on, no matter how you know, disappointed it kind of felt. But the weird thing about the Nakamura is it's like when you know, when you see the flashback in Company Man yeah. and then you think about the things that Hero's father's done, it's like, was he doing that to push Hero or did he truly not want him to be a part of, yeah. part of the explosion? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that was ever actually really resolved. Honestly. There's that deleted scene where they explain his power and it's him and Ando having a conversation and because Hero, at this point, Hero's disappeared, it kind of shows that he was looking out for his son's best interest, but he should have known that his son was going to get involved somehow. I think he was just trying to save his own son's life. Yeah. So we're at the Berto's Diner, of course. Yep. We're in Texas with Matt, Ted, and Mr. Bennett, and Bennett, like, stops to eat and then they're planning their next move and Matt's like, are we safe? And he's like, oh, the company won't come after you in a place. <laughs> like, but we gotta take out this tracking system, which of course is in New York. Yep. And I'm like, okay, finally! <laughs> 19 episodes in and finally we're getting Ted to New York. <laughs> But then at the same time, like, kind of getting Ted to New York thing, it's what um, Bennett tells them they have to go and do. They have to go find this tracking system. He should have just said to Ted, look, you stay here. You're an exploding man. <laughs> I've seen you nearly explode. New York's going to explode in, like, a couple of weeks. So how about we kind of leave you behind for a bit? And, you know, you just stay here and, you know, we'll, we'll leave you out in the desert. Well, obviously, he didn't know exactly what it was. So maybe he thought it was radar-based and he could use his EMP. Yeah. Because it's electromagnetic pulse to destroy it mm, i don't know i th i think it's just bad writing at this point but you know it's kind of convenient, convenient plot is convenient so yeah. yeah but for like a character who's so well developed and so smart even though he is <laughs> like when when uh, matt has a go at him for being middle management it's friggin great i know he's like is that where mr yeah. is and like, he's like oh, you know that name <laughs> and that's like i read it from thompson's thoughts and he goes 
Oh. <laughs> yeah, who got middle fingers? <laughs> it's like, never mind all yeah. that. But so he goes, Linderman's in Vegas, but we're going to New York. But for someone who's so smart, he kind of is just doing something very stupid. That's one of the only three issues I have. But that's just like, that's a minor plot point, you know? That's a very minor yeah, it thing. it is. But he wanted, he didn't want them to be able to ever find Claire. One, and he really kind of wanted to start taking the company down. And I guess that, that's your prime way. You can't find special, especially his daughter, you know? Love makes you stupid. I guess. Anyway, at the Sanders sisters' house, we see Micah and Jessica preparing to leave. Micah asks why Jessica picked him up early, and she's like, yeah, we have to meet with Linderman. And Linderman introduces himself, and he's like, how would you like to save the world? And so he knows right where to get Micah at yeah. his heart. <laughs> Micah rides off with Linderman's limo, and Jessica begins to shiver, and then she turns into Candace, just as the real Jessica pulls yeah. up in her cat. <laughs> it's like, nice. That was great. Cut to Mohinder's apartment discussing Siler with Thompson, who explains that because he called uh, Noah yeah, yeah. and he goes, "Yeah, that guy's ne- not." <laughs> no, no really, yeah. That is the worst business card, by the way. <laughs> I will say it time and time again for a paper company. <laughs> but Mohinder's like, whenever he's in trouble, oh, I know. I'll just call the company who like kidnapped people and stuff like that. And then Thompson tells Mohinder that they'll need to work together to stop Siler. Finally, he's like, I feel like at this point, Mohinder just feels like he's finally being appreciated. <laughs> people aren't jerking him down, and I'm like, oh, oh honey. yeah. He's like, you don't need my research, um, but he's like, yeah, we do need your research. We need you and your research. So yeah, you're going to come with us. We're not going to help you find Sila. We're just going to take you for your research. <laughs> Cut to Isaac's apartment and he's coming out of his little trance and he sees the painting of Sila. And from across the room, we see Sila marveling at I know, right? <laughs> And so like, he doesn't seem scared. Isaac just smirks at Sila and then he's like, I know you're here to kill me. And he's like, uh, we tried fighting the future and see that you were defeated. And then Siler just like pounds him and like with all these art brushes and <laughs> like pales him. Yeah, it's him. almost like, okay, this is a crucifixion. Yeah, all, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So very messiahic at this point. And I guess you can kind of say the same thing, you know, Isaac. You can compare Isaac and Jesus because, you know, they both knew that they had to die for the greater good. So, yeah, you know, they're bringing the religion back into it. No, no good story <laughs> goes without Jesus. Religion, exactly. that super, especially superhero yeah. genre. <laughs> so, yeah, there, we finally got it. <laughs> oh, then Siler's like, I want to see picture, pictures about my future. And he's like, um, that's gone. Isaac is just dead. He's gone. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just it's just weird. Siler's like, all right, whatever. It was, You're dead. it was a really good i think the way that he died just the the imagery that they they brought up with him dying was very like very smart they you know they had him they had sila like cowering over the top of him and they cut to like the paintings of him dying and i thought that was really good like editing and i thought it was a really good way to put across you know he's dead but do it in kind of like a really cool way and not make it kind of implied no hope no hope yeah return. exactly and then we cut back to Angela's house and Nathan uses the glass sharp and Peter's had to open a package. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, they're just Nathan, using it. so callous. <laughs> they're all this, they just keep it around and use it as like a, a paper cutter. Yeah. Oh, don't even God. clean off the, don't even clean off the blood. Just carry on with it. My new letter opener. Yay. <laughs> it's the painting of himself in the White House. And I'm like, man, Linderman knows how to push his butt. I know, right? <laughs> it's all, That's always been Nathan's air quote power. It's been in his political power, not in his actual power of flight. And he's always managed to get away with it because he's just like, you know, well, I just fly. There's, what am I going to do? Just fly away? And it's more. It's always been like his like political power, which is the, his main strength in this first season anyway. And it's always been the way to kind of get to him, to let him know, you know, he's going to win and he's going to be president. He's like, yeah, I'm there. He drinks the Kool-Aid straight away. So, yeah. <laughs> like straight Yeah, up. yeah. He, he doesn't even think about it. He's just like, oh, okay, I'm going to be right. Okay, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'll join you. That's all you had to say. Point zero seven of the population, that's fine. No, it's fine. I'm president. It's all good. <laughs> Claire comes in to talk to him. He tells her, he's like, I want to be there for you. But because of the election and everything that's happening, you should probably just go to Paris yeah. with your <laughs> Until after the election and the explosion. So in a way, we can kind of see, still see Nathan's little sappy heart showing a little yeah. bit. But mostly because of the election. Let's exactly, see. yeah. Back at Isaac's studio, Siler is in one of those stupid trances painting an image. I always loved his paintings. I thought they were very good. Just to... Except for the exploding image. 
Oh no, I mean like the way that Silas paintings are different from oh. Elsa's. Like it was kind of Picasso-y, uh, I think is the only way I can kind of describe it. It was very different from Isaac slash Peter's paintings. It was, you know, it just kind of felt a bit more lived in and a bit more rugged. It's just, you know, the colours are a bit starker and, you know, Nathan just looks like the the Nathan that he paints looks really creepy and lizard-like, which, you know, obviously is a, I, I didn't pick it up. I didn't pick up, you know, the, the reveal, but I thought it was great. He's, the image is actually pretty disturbing honestly yeah. <laughs> and it's of him in the uh, in the white house office instead of nathan yeah and isaac lies dead nearby next to his gun just as yeah. hero found him in the future yep yeah. and yeah you're right this is a really great foreshadowing little piece right mm. there, especially for the next episode yeah overall in the series so we cut to five years in the future here on Ando Look out at a de- Finally, from where we left yep. off last, <laughs> finally we're back here. Um, five years in the future here on Ando Look out at the devastated New York from the Devereux Root Top, just like Isaac's little yep. uh, comic book. And Ando urges Hero to return them to present, but Hero reasons that they can learn what went wrong before returning home. And he says that Isaac will know what's happening. <laughs> and Ando points out that Isaac was dead the last time Hero jumped into the future. He's like, but Sawyer's been captured. Yeah. So, you know. And I'm like, oh, Hero. And, then, uh, and <laughs> then Ando says, I'm confused. And I think everyone kind of agreed with him at this point. Because <laughs> that's what happens yeah. when time travel stories. You just get easily confused. Definitely. So they show up and they see the apartment is covered with numbers. As, uh, clippings and like string hanging yeah. and it's just, just this crazy wall of weird but a 3D version yeah it's um like Mahinda's map but just 3D it's so good these <laughs> <laughs> hero thinks it's the timeline and on the strings we see the save the cheerleader and then we see Nathan Petrelli's leadership following the explosion and then we hear a noise and it's like a sword being drawn yep. and then it's future hero versus present day hero. <laughs> it was a great to black. <laughs> great to be continued. And just like the difference in them, like you can tell just even from the voices how different they are. Like future hero's got that kind of deeper voice. Obviously he speaks English a lot better, but he's got that deeper voice. He's very more confident in himself, whereas, you know, present day hero is still trying to figure everything out, which I'm hoping we don't really get in Heroes Reborn. I'm hoping we get more of Future Hero. It better be Future yeah. Hero. I swear. I want that so bad. Even- they, they have a really good opportunity. So yeah, best scene. Oh, great. Okay, great. I'm going to go with a B for once. Um, yeah, it was just a really good episode. And just where it leads into, it's really well paced. And, you know, apart from like the, the DL yeah. Nikki stuff, but, you know, you can kind of forgive that. And it kind of has like pretty much nearly every character, but gives them a decent amount of time and still pushes the story forward without feeling too rushed, if you get me. How about you? Oh, yeah, definitely. This one is definitely a B plus for yeah. me. If, I would swear, if you would have took the, the Nikki stuff out, it would have been an A minus. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> hands down, because of that. Like that all that that always drags down the story, especially when we get towards the end of the season yeah. with the Linderman thing. It still kind of goes unanswered. Yeah. So it definitely feels unnecessary. <laughs> like we spent all this time for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. It's retrospective grade. Any favorite scenes? The very last scene, yeah. obviously, is my favorite. Because it's future hero yep. and present day hero and confused Ando in the background. <laughs> I'll go with that. Um, but I also like Angela and Claire screen time together. Yeah, I'll go with a uh, Peter Death. I think it just looked really cool, like the whole floating glass shards and then just the flick and then just Peter just uh, like becoming visible again and falling to the ground. I thought it looked really good. And maybe the the painting, like Sila's painting of you know himself slash Nathan, was really good as well. What about some lines? <laughs> actually had a really fun dialogue oh no just it just has to, just has to be you me i love that bit at the end sorry i i didn't do it justice by doing it properly but like the the hero present day hero kind of interaction i really like i might have to find the sound clip for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, put it in there. i think my favorite line hands down in this episode next to the middle middle management line is angela to claire you get that mouth from me yeah <laughs> Loved it. Iconic little moments, I definitely have to say, are the paintings, both the Nathan and the White House, yeah. especially when it gets sent to him, yeah. and then Siler's painting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've got trivia. B. 
be a time. Okay, so Lindemann does the opening narration of the episode rather than Mahinda. The scene where Peter enters Mahinda's apartment at the end of Parasite and also at the beginning of here, they were both directed by the two different directors of the episodes and they thought it would make it a lot quicker and easier, but it didn't. They pretty much did double the work rather than half the work because of... Yeah, they've yeah. got experiment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demon give no crap on his vlog. <laughs> the Easter egg of how to stop an exploding man was Isaac Lane on the floor with the paintbrushes in his wrists, and that was obviously way before this episode ever aired. I think that was the first time that the behind the scenes photos were actually a decent Easter egg, but only in retrospect. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Kim in the commentary for this said that the beginning of the episode was an homage to Isaac, which we've already said because they knew it would be his last, so that's why they featured most of his paintings and used it to introduce each character during the recap. He also says that there was a line when um, Candice slash Claire comes in to Mr. Bennett and the line was, you smell like a stripper. And it was dropped for unknown reasons. I, I'm just saying as a person who actually likes strip clubs, most strippers smell pretty yeah. good. The glitter, <laughs> <laughs> the glitter gets everywhere. Ando calls Sila the brain man in Japanese, but the words actually translate to head cut man. Japanese is a hard yeah. language, almost as hard as any of the Chinese dialects. <laughs> the title refers to the fact that in Lindemann's estimation, 5 million people, or roughly 0. 0.07 of the world's population, will die in the explosion. But based on 2006, 5 million would have been closer to 0. 0.76, which isn't as good a title. <laughs> 0. 0.076, yeah. And uh, the offence of future hero meeting present day hero is told in the graphic novel String Theory from a future hero's perspective, which we will get into now, I suppose. String Theory is such a good yeah. one. Um, so the story was by Joe Pakowski. The art was by Staz Johnson. The Easter egg was a high-res PDF of Hannah's Call to Arms. That was pretty handy. To yep. me. I believe that the link, um, heroeswithme.com, actually still has a working link to the PDF. It's yeah. Interesting. I think I've... They're pretty good about keeping that. Stuff. I think I've put that out on the uh, on our Twitter as well. I think if you go through our media, you can find it. I might put it on the Tumblr and the the Facebook now as well. Because um, I think I was asking people who were online if they were in it to let us know so that we can you know find them. And I think one person did. So the only thing I've got about this is just Hero going over the timeline of what happened, you know, where he tried to stab Sila, but he was unable because he had stolen Claire Bennett's powers and how he'd travelled back in time. He'd gone to the exact moment that he needed to to tell Peter Petrelli, save the cheerleader, save the world. And then he comes in back to his apartment or Isaac's apartment and finds present day Hero and Ando. And it just shows how... Um... But again, why didn't he just cut his ass? <laughs> <laughs> that is the real question to ask. Well, I think it's just one of those things where I, I can't remember what happened, but, you know, you stab someone, you think they're going to die. Like, he doesn't know that he's got Claire's power at this point, I'm assuming. So he stabs him and then he comes back to life. So he, he's kind of in awe and he's kind of shocked and he doesn't like think... For me personally... You go for the head straight I, away. I, I like guns. <laughs> like, if somebody breaks into the house, I'm not giving a warning. I'm just straight up headshot. I'm not taking no chances. <laughs> I want to be with you in a zombie apocalypse. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yes, you would. <laughs> I know Archie, I know Hancock. The only thing about the comic is it just shows future hero and, and how um, world-worn and how the, the future has kind of affected him. Not only just Ando dying, because I don't think we kind of know that at that point, but, you know, just how... Stop the future sparrow. Yes, we do, yeah. Uh, quick, you know, curfew is curfew. <laughs> <laughs> just you know how world warning is and it's him trying to stop he's trying to make a bright future which you know you always try and do in the future when it's dark you try and go back and save it <laughs> yeah this was a great one to also uh, kind of prepare you for the next yeah. episode yeah, yeah. so yeah like i think that this is like definitely one of the best like like i said executed mini arcs with the media and everything yeah. kind of just going together because we're right at the end of the season basically. yeah the only trivia i have is future heroes trademark ponytail is conspicuously absent from the graphic novel because basically when they show showed pictures of future hero to to the artist reference he was provided was so poor it was like extremely dark it was practically illegible screen caps he had no idea that future hero had a ponytail so that's why it's not in there i don't think that he should have admitted the second part though because he talks about how he doesn't i remember the interview he's like i don't really follow yes. heroes what the hell are you doing drawing yeah. my time he does he does that Get out of here with he, that. he explains that as well in um in Ando's wearing a police uniform instead of the Corinthian casino security uniform. He says it's because he doesn't follow heroes and he thought Ando was a police officer based on the screen cap he was given. So yeah, that is basically it. Future hero and present hero. Future hero is always better. Yeah. Like, I like his optimism, the present day hero and everything, but I just I just like his comments. Yes. Even though it's because of this awful thing, 
know yeah, yeah. But if it is future hero in the in the next season, I don't know whether or not they're going to have to get rid of Ando because that's the main reason why he becomes so badass, really, isn't it? Because there's no Ando well, kind of offset. Like certain things could have changed mm. we'll because there weren't like people with like generated powers from the serum either at that time. Yeah. So they changed something. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Anyway, yeah, time for some shoutouts yep. for our Twitter people. Okay. The email I have is only a tweet. It's from Danny, D-A-N-I, Mac and Cheese. It's just a tweet, so it's not very long. It's a, I think Nikki's character was way too confusing with Jessica. It, it could have been explained more as to why there are two people in one body. I think they kind of explained it well. Do you, or? It's the worst superhero power, but I think they explained it pretty well. They explained it as in um, it was split personalities and she was taking on Jessica, her former sister, because of it's because of all the, the trauma that happened when they were younger, obviously. Like, because she is a special, yeah. her trauma was personified. That's the way that I think. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question, Danny Mac and Cheese. That's all I've got. So we will go in on to your favourite bit and my favourite bit. Shameless plugs <laughs> and shout outs. So... You can email us any of your thoughts on the Hero Zeps, our actual Primatech episodes, or questions about the show, or for us as hosts at primatechfiles at gmail.com. You can listen to us on iTunes. You can just download, subscribe, rate, and review. Just search Primatech Files. You can also search Primatech Files on Stitcher, bookmark Libsyn. It's just primatechfiles.libsyn.com. Or SoundCloud. You can favorite Southgate Media Group. And those are all the ways you can listen to our podcast. Um, tell your friends about us. And so, you know, we can get more Heroes fans involved. Speaking of Southgate Media Group, you can find them on iTunes for numerous podcasts on TV and popular culture, or just search them on southgatemediagroup.com to learn about the hosts, keep up to date with the podcast, and read weekly blogs. Our social media, you can find us on Tumblr, primatechfiles.tumblr.com, and facebook.com slash primatechfiles. We live tweet two episodes every Saturday. Just follow Primatech Files on Twitter to find out which eps and use the Primatech Files hashtag to join during the episode. Episode 19 we just finished and I'm going to send shout outs to Ms. Gemini1978, it's Mare Young, Pam Pam for tweets, Sinzia667, Soft underscore Guitar60, English Idiot 101, Sky Lartheris, and Jake is Kandar with two R's. There are people who all tweeted along, faved or retweeted during the live tweet. You can find any of my writings at quanmagazine.com, that's Q-U-A-N, or thepeoplesmovies.com. Most of my writing is done at tvbinges.com, which you can use to find all your binge-watching needs and to create your own binges, and we will help promote it. Finally, you can find me at Ricky J. Diaz on Twitter. It's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z, or Z, <laughs> if you are English. You can find me on Twitter, at Lilith Hellfire. You can find me on Tumblr, lilithhellfire.tumblr.com. Please be sure to check out my blog if you're a comic book geek or just a pop culture junkie like me at littlepopcultureboltures.blogspot.com. And if you are into comic book shows, I do uh, co-host uh, several on the South Asian Network. I host The Flashpoint, which we're going to get into the The Flash. Yes, The Flash. And Queen Kazadik is very good as a hero, and I do a general comic book Time to tell them our tagline. Download the podcast, save the world. <laughs> <laughs>